I notice things and they make me laugh, and then I usually like store them in the back of my head somewhere, and then they end up on the stage. I think that uh, there was a point in time where where rap was pretty much like non-existent in Ohio. I actually grew up listening to pop music. It's the coolest thing in the entire universe. I love Ohio. I I, I miss it. <laughs> Stomach started growling and he started slowing the way he was walking and taking smaller strides and you could tell something was definitely not right. All my stuff has literary elements too. We've gotten to such a phase where it's people can just say they're an artist. You know, wading through a sea of drunks. Mm -hmm trying to do the best he can for the band. Being in a room full of all your best friends, even if you don't know anybody, because you can sing and dance together and just have a really good time. If you don't know, you don't need to know, man. Would you like to do a podcast? Like Gary or the You always got to make it into something, don't you? <laughs> you can't just hang out. <laughs> People complain that there's nothing to do here, but there is. You just have to go for it. The Nursery This means in the light of a torch Realize nothing is forced Nothing is forced Hey guys, welcome to Nursery. My name's Lee Boyle. Uh, make sure you check out thirdclass.net. We have a new album out called Virginia's Playlist. And we're also sponsored by The Orange Avocado, 1393 Bourbon Canfield Road in Bourbon, Ohio. Sponsored by Jimmy Fro Indie Music Show. Go on iTunes and give them a review and a listen and Timeless Shots Photography, TimelessShots.com. Today I have Baroque Monody with me. Uh, they're a band from Youngstown, Ohio. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about their music up front, but then we'll kind of get into the, just their lives and see if anything for listeners intrigues anybody. Uh, can you guys state, say, state your names? And put your hand on the Bible. That's okay, Jenny Rose. Rick Polo. Okay, <clears throat> Jenny and Rick. Mm -hmm. You guys are in a band called Baroque Monody. Baroque was a time when exaggerated, dramatic art was a thing. Um, and uh, monody has to do with some sort of death, poetic death. Is that correct? So real quick in a nutshell, what's, what the hell's up with that? Oh, well, <laughs> uh, you know, a monody is sort of like a monologue, uh -huh. only sung. Uh -huh. and, and typically, well, they came about in the Baroque period where people were singing uh, what would be monophonic music at the time. Mm -hmm. So like one singer, which there is technically one singer. Although yes. we have a backing singer now, but anyway. Oh, that's cool. Point is, um, I guess you could say it's a double if not triple entendre. Mm -hmm. So, and then the word broke is also a little bit of a pun, like broke. Okay. And sure. actually what's funny about that too is even though people think it's a French word, it's actually a Portuguese word, mm -hmm. which means uh, taking... Uh, stuff that's not so good and making it cooler like mm -hmm. so it has to do with a defective pearl is that how it actually came about mm -hmm. and then you started polishing pearls and now it's actually a piece of jewelry because oh. before pearls used to be just like something in the dirt just like anything else mm -hmm. so I'd like to think that there's a little bit of an analogy there especially given where we're from so. okay and is there, is there <laughs> an, am I mistaken in thinking mm -hmm. there's a, an association with death yeah, absolutely. What, what's well, the Well, I think uh, because I originally kind of started the project being very inspired by, like, um, I guess you could say doom stuff, but, like, I really liked a band, a band uh, that I think is still in existence called Virgin Black. And I liked the idea of their name because it, it has that double side. Like, I guess you could say Marilyn Manson did the same thing, where it's like two sides mm. to, to the same coin mm -hmm. type of situation. But I liked the idea that they did a lot of um, albums actually constructed by, like, they have one called Requiem. They have the Requiem, and it actually follows the actual format of a Requiem mass. And I liked the idea of... I guess uh, I always knew Aphrodite Last was, was going to be in, in the works, for example. Like, mm -hmm. I had actually the idea for that before I even had the idea for the first record. I just, mm. I wanted it to be perfect and I wanted to execute it, you know, I guess you could say in a way that really paid tribute to these dead celebrities, right? Okay. But yeah. I didn't want it to be in a way that was... Uh, I guess you could say negative or overly lamentful. 
Mm-hmm. I wanted it to be in a way that was more of a, hey, girl, I, I know what you were trying to do, and too bad you didn't get to do it longer, or something mm-hmm. like that kind of a approach. So there's some immortality silly. involved I would, in I would say, yeah, because like, I don't really think, I'm not the kind of person anyway that thinks that death is it, and it has to be some some gross, crass thing. Like, I think mm-hmm. it, I think it's, be, you know, that, that's what it's like a typical goth saying that, but, like, it's kind of no, true, no. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. to find that kind of... Um, I guess beauty in that and anything that like I said is um, something that normally wouldn't be uh, appreciated you know even even down to like in the merch like I actually sell jewelry that's like broken stuff that mm-hmm. I like forge together to make something else mm-hmm. and I, I very much like the idea of um, reconstruction and and things like that and I guess you could say that's similar to the backdrop around here too people like to take things that are old and make them into something better or trans transmute mm-hmm. them somehow yeah sure. just a transference of energy i guess yeah and that's so if listeners don't know what we're t- referring to mm-hmm. you know this band that we have in here today baroque monody has an album called aphrodite laughs came out last fall correct yeah, yeah. um mm-hmm. so um listeners can go to baroquemonody.bandcamp.com is that kind of the best site to go to yeah. or else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. so um if you guys don't know what we're saying mm-hmm. it's b-a-r-o-q-u-e-m-o-n-o-d-y dot bandcamp dot com yes, just so because i know no, it sounds no, weird okay. like I, I, listeners know. will be like what are you talking I feel about like, honestly Broke, though what? <laughs> like because uh, i was very careful when i when mm-hmm. i selected the name and because it is also a music theory term but i knew mm-hmm. that no one else would have it too you know what mm-hmm. i mean but i also knew that like oh man you know like i'm gonna go into like the average bar and no one's gonna know what the heck i'm saying but mm-hmm. i think i'm okay with that no nah, and it's not that confusing yeah. I'm, I'm just i'd probably covering be bases. more successful if i had a, a smaller word we, or something. we get no. barbecue monday all the time too <laughs> barbecue i don't really monday. care about <laughs> that's success. awesome so. i care about just gotta run with it yeah. trying to <laughs> do something mm-hmm. with what i want to without you know ripping off all my influences or yeah something. i want to i want to have everybody in there and then make my own little stern in a pot thing and mm-hmm. kind of just see what happens. And if I like oh, that's it, great. Great. sometimes I don't even like it. It is what it is, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. And uh, working with other people, too, I think it makes a lot a, a lot uh, easier for me to accept the end product, if that makes sense. Because mm-hmm. sometimes when you're just by yourself, you just want to chuck everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. So everyone else goes, oh, no, no, that, that's fine. Or I'll add a part, and then it becomes its own yeah. organic kind of has to move forward so you guys have featured players on this album who who are that who are some of your notable most notable ones that you can name i saw that you guys thanked me and the band in the in the album credits i appreciate that thank you actually it's going to be the next album that's going to have the guests oh okay so was this just you two at the this was a full band uh we have our permanent bass player now Uh uh, charles cordison he's Uh been playing with us since uh, mid 2015, uh-huh. and yeah. um, we we've gone through a handful of numbers um, from our in, incarnation until now. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's primarily been her and I right. as mm. the leading, and we've opened that up. Now Charles, he's contributed a lot of, um, especially had, on a- Aphrodite yeah. Laughs. Two of those songs were yeah. his riff mm. and his sort of what he brought to the storyline. Yeah. I feel a little bit bad that I guess you could say he had a George Harrison allotment on the yeah. album. Side, you know what I mean? Too, so, right. Yeah. But um, I think that when you first start getting going, writing with people, especially like a third or even fourth person, even with lots of hands in the pot, you it's it's better to just kind of, I guess, gradually, rather than every, having everything be willy-nilly, you know. Um, I've been wanting to have uh, an album where like maybe on every track there was like someone um like basically i guess i'll spill the beans um i'm gonna have an ep or we're gonna have an ep that all all of us work on and we're all gonna kind of there's gonna be four songs on it Mm. and it's gonna be called the four loves based on the c.s lewis book just to kind of tide people over for the next album because the next album is going to be kind of probably like a two like a double length and i'm gonna need time yeah. i'm gonna sure. need time because i'm gonna have to write like a full libretto because it's actually gonna be a rock opera that'll be fun so that'll like i'm basically gonna have like almost like how tommy was where like there was like a random other singer that <laughs> would come in yeah that's my idea anyway and i hope that happens mm-hmm. and i wanted it to happen for aphrodite because the original plan was that i was gonna have almost like a loose like i guess you could say role playing for each celebrity but you know it's it's just not really as it wasn't as i guess you could say feasible or realistic mm-hmm, mm-hmm. given the time and the you know constraints and all like right. that but 
um, hopefully if I go ahead and do a little bit of an EP and like a tighter, it kind of gives me a little more time to work on something that would be that, um, I guess you could say involved, like yeah. especially socially involved. Yeah. So I think in, in a lot of aspects, it's going to take more, um, social network i don't mean social networking like facebook i just mm. mean like actual physical social networking getting those people and, and there and no and getting yeah. to know people <clears throat> and yeah. and not being so i guess you could say gender focused mm -hmm. like the last one was maybe too gender focused in that case because it is quite hard to find females that don't want to tear each other apart <laughs> <laughs> yeah totally <laughs> so no that's cool and yeah. if listeners listeners are people who listen to nursery and they kind of have heard other episodes they hear me yammer a lot about my own musical projects and some yeah. parallels i can draw here are yeah. that with our last album we worked with a large community of people we yeah. sidelined all of them yes <laughs> you know we yes. george harrison all of them right. and um, <laughs> we also have this weird habit of writing about the pacific northwest and happens to be my favorite song on aphrodite last is definitely washington i got you leaning out your window you writhing on your floor It's all because of my pride now I just can't take it anymore
I guess you could probably guess that it's not just because it's that, but it's also a light rock song compared to the rest of the album, of course. Okay. I, I, you know, it's too heavy sometimes for me. I liked it a okay. lot, but I'm, yeah, I'm a yeah, limp. Yeah. So I gravitate <laughs> towards your guys when you guys do like yeah. straight laced, like pop rock is my thing that okay. I like the best when you guys do. And I, and I like that. And I think some other parallels are just that we like kind of stick in Ohio a lot and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. But in, in writing about, you know, and I know Washington, you weren't talking about like <laughs> going to Seattle like I was talking no, about. No, or, no. Obviously not. But um, I just think like I, I felt like a nice little like traveling mood in that song and the way the instrumentation yeah. was and stuff like that. Cool. And, yeah, um, thank you. and you guys like to take us out of music so that people have been introduced to Rogue Monody. Mm-hmm. Where have you guys traveled in your lives? How old are you now? I'm 29. Mm, you answer because I did a lot of talking. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where have you traveled? Like you're 29, so that you're at the age where you could have gone a few places by now, or or I was, maybe you didn't. I, don't <laughs> I, I was lucky enough when I was younger. I was playing in a band, and we actually got to tour nationally a little mm-hmm. bit. And um, I never got any uh, further west than Chicago with them. Mm-hmm. But it was uh, it was really nice just getting out of Ohio yeah. and seeing how di- different audiences really are in different towns and different areas. Uh, it, one of the cities that I loved personally playing was Nashville. Uh, there's just Thank such you. a there's such a musical community and, and it's not just country western. I mean there's you walk down the strip and there's a bar on every corner and there's a band all day long. Mm-hmm. You'll see a rock band, you'll see hip hop going on, you'll see that traditional country and some acoustic folk stuff and you know right across the street there's a, you know, a heavy metal band, you know, mm-hmm. slamming away. So it's a very musical town and mm-hmm. it's that art and creativity it's just a melting pot and it's really encouraged there and uh Atlanta had a similar vibe. I, I enjoyed Atlanta. I was only there very briefly and uh, didn't really get to take in some of the cities I really wanted to, mm-hmm. like New Orleans or Atlanta or I'm trying to think where else, uh, Richmond. Uh, like mm-hmm. we got, I think we were in Nashville for about three or four days. Mm-hmm. So I was able to take it in. Um, and it, and it stuck with me, and I haven't actually had the opportunity really since then to tour any. But I mean, if if the opportunity presented itself, Nashville somewhere, I would definitely love to return to and see what it's like now, six or seven years later. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you guys, um, and, uh, if people don't know, you guys are a couple who live in where Warren, Ohio. Am I right? On Struthers. 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 I'm sorry. You told Warren. me that. <laughs> so yeah, that maybe that's um, confusing. And so you're around here. You're somewhere near where I'm at. I'm in yeah. Boardman. So um, you guys have a couple nights off together, and you, you're working people. You're not like you're not living some dream where you're yeah. in a loft painting and jobs. writing music yeah. for a living or whatever <laughs> yeah. that is. Um, so what's it like being a working class Ohioan, just in general? Like, what does that do for for your confidence? For your personality you know like do you feel like you built character are you like i hate working this job i just want to my break or you know how, what's your attitude on that uh, personally i enjoy i'm proud of the fact that i come from a working class mm-hmm. background mm-hmm. and um it, it, it's hard to imagine anything else because i still feel like you know say you know in that off chance we made it as musicians you know full time i feel like on the side i'd still have to be because what are you going to do with your spare time, you know what I, I mean? Agree. And I mean, I'd love to get mm-hmm. into more writing and different things like that. But mm. it, it's just, I have this appreciation. And I, I've talked to people who are lucky enough to make it as a living. Mm. And, you know, interestingly enough, sometimes they they get bored with it. You know, yeah. it, it's great when you're when you're 21 and they're dangling the carrot in front of your face and you, and you get a bite. And you chase that, and um, you know, but I mean, unless you really, really make it, and the music industry, that's a whole other conversation how the music industry has just changed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it is very, I mean, you used to be an indie band, mm-hmm. you know, in the 90s and the early aughts, you know, mm-hmm. it, and, and you can make a living and you can survive. Mm-hmm. And now you see a lot of these bands that are really what's happening in music, and you would think this this is the new thing and a lot of these people still have their day jobs Mm -hmm. you know they're lucky enough to maybe go and put out a record and do some tours but they keep you know they really keep it independent and 
I have a lot of respect for that. It's very interesting mm. the avenues music has went down. Mm-hmm. And you guys, um, what do you do? You don't have to name any names or anything, but what do you what do you do for work? I work in a cemetery, fittingly enough. <laughs> That's that perfect. is so uh, <laughs> That's perfect. How, and, and you? I'm a piano teacher and a okay. nanny. I, well, I homeschool kids, and mm-hmm. I feel like I would still want to do that um, mm-hmm. as well because I think that um, teaching other people music, um, especially young children, I think it helps me really appreciate um, the roots of everything and even, even writing, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like... Uh, I feel like if I didn't do anything else besides music, I wouldn't have anything to write about. Like, yeah, I was gonna, do you know yeah, what I, was, I mean? Ask you like, guys I, that next, and yeah. I and I really actually think, uh, I mean, maybe I'd feel different if I did something else for a job, or yeah. if I had it harder, I guess you could say, or mm-hmm. like worked in a factory or something where, believe it or not, I would have maybe more time to think. If that makes right. sense, you know, like. Um, but I think that um, daydreaming to an extent is is very good. But if you don't have a something to daydream about or like a life experience or like Mm -hmm. something to like even though like my lyrics they're not like here's what it is you know Mm -hmm. like or whatever i think that very much still um how i personify things in whatever you know song it comes from something and then maybe something something else on a you know a macro level and i try to put it together and try to make it a little bit something everyone can listen to but it very much does a lot of times come from uh thinking about real life things or real life people you mm-hmm. know in in the sense of the the last album um because they're all you know they're very they're very real we're very r- real people yeah totally you know? totally and uh I wanted to examine that part of them that wasn't so glamorous in a lot of respects. So. Yeah, sure. And, <laughs> and and the fact that you guys focus in on certain people all the time mm-hmm. and death or and other things like metaphorical and referential things mm-hmm. is great, especially makes for a heavy theme in music and is kind of embracing mm-hmm. the thing where uh, sometimes people claim that musicians write the same song over and over again. Yeah, it's um, true. And uh, that's cool. I, I knew that like, when I, I was a young kid, I didn't want to have, you know, 20,000 songs about love. Like, no offense yeah, to yeah, bands yeah. that do that, but it's oh, been sure, done, yeah. and it's mm-hmm. like, okay. I, it wouldn't yeah. be sincere. Yeah. I think no. that were, if that yeah. were us doing it, we... Uh, mm. As you can tell, probably by how much we like to elaborate yeah. on things, you know, we yeah. like to we like to expand upon things and take yeah. different yeah. ideas and dissect them. You like to get I'm specific. Not, yeah, yeah. I, I guess I guess in a weird way though, uh, that is kind of coming on the next album, the mm-hmm. more loves. Some but more love stuff. E- even Some though love stuff, yeah. I am quite a romantic person mm-hmm. on the inside, I think that my facade is very much still very you know kind of cerebral and whatever and i even that i have to kind of put into a cart compartmentalized Mm. you know like i guess you could say you know is love really easily (laughs) definable because i mean there's a lot of different kinds of love (laughs) you know yeah and yeah Yeah. and yeah you know know. there's there's a lot of ways so it's going to be really interesting how we're going to tackle this next project Mm -hmm. really looking at love you know the the happy sides, the downsides, mm-hmm. the light, the dark, you know, and how they often, those lines are blurred. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Love can do that. Basically, mm-hmm. C.S. Lewis says that all four of them at the same time is what you should be, like, you know, looking for. Mm-hmm. But each of them separately is still important because of the types of people or, in in his instance, God, that you might, you know, have a relationship with. Mm-hmm. And um, so... I guess, I mean, I'm still kind of, like, writing about it. You know, my original aim wasn't to necessarily do that, but I'm doing it in a way that's not going to be, like, um, woo-woo, I love you chorus, you know, or something. Totally. The Beatles did it, and they did it the best, so we can just go ahead and move on ahead because (laughs) they nailed it. (laughs) Yeah, well, that's that's good. And, like, it sounds like you guys, like, obviously you're talking a lot about the future, but yeah, and, and there's a certain innocence that's maybe lost in trying to, write about love at this age as opposed to exactly. like when you're like yeah. kind of puppy love I was going to say actually you know because John Lennon even said like love me do like that was something that you know was very 20s of him but then when yeah. he got older he was writing like you know the stuff on Imagine you know the, the songs to Yoko and mm-hmm. Oh My Love which mm-hmm. is a really cool one and I really yeah. like the line the line where he says my mind can feel mm-hmm. so he's kind of getting his intellectual side and his romantic side if you, you know that's a great song so. yeah, yeah this is a good yeah. song yeah for sure, and you got going way back even further. Uh, what were your child 
your respectful childhood's like, you know? Like, what, what, where'd you come from? Uh, well, I was actually raised by uh, a musician and, uh, and a deep appreciator of music. So mm -hmm. I had, you know, music in my family. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm related to a lot of musicians, mm -hmm. which, you know, I won't necessarily list or anything, you know. Mm -hmm. But, um, I, you know, I was given piano lessons from a young age, and uh, I don't think anyone ever thought that I'd really do much with that. But, it, you know, obviously I did. I liked it enough to, to want to do it and share it with people. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I guess you could say I was one of those people that just kind of let it envelop me as a teenager. Mm -hmm. And then it wasn't until, like, my 20s that all of a sudden people were saying that I was cool and I was unaware yeah. of this fact. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then I got real sick in my 20s a lot, so I wasn't really oh, out. Really? Um, you know, so, uh, you know, now that I'm in my 30s and I kind of have some of that stuff balanced out and I think a, a more balanced idea of who I am, it's, it's a good time to kind of write a little more because I, I kind of I waxed and waned between... Uh, um, being introverted and being kind of like an extrovert only kind of begrudgingly so mm. now i think i have a balanced social life but that's probably getting off the topic because now i'm not a child anymore no but that's cool <laughs> kind of as musicians we yeah stay a little it kind of like gives you a full, full circle i think when you're getting to be in your 30s definitely oh yeah in your 20s i say i still think you're a kid so <laughs> totally yeah <laughs> he's, he's you know. almost not gonna be a kid anymore so. yeah i got about nine <laughs> months left yeah man i milked that nine months when I was <laughs> oh 29. i i plan yeah. on it <laughs> yeah i like went and moved out to washington and worked at a camp it was like the last little bit of innocence i was like i'm 20 something just like you guys you know <laughs> tried to act 21 yeah stuff like that and how about you your childhood <laughs> my childhood um i was i wasn't as fortunate to have as much music as she did. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my mom was a huge uh, classic rock fan. Uh, it's funny because she was really into Alice Cooper and Kiss, and you know the uh, <laughs> you know the seventies. You think that was what had everyone up mm -hmm. in arms, and you know as Pretty a cool. as a young angsty teen raised on punk rock. Uh, I eventually found myself really into bands like Nine Inch Nails and Marilyn Manson as a teen, which kind of, um, although my mother wasn't too happy about that, it, it, there's some obvious parallels mm -hmm. drawn from <laughs> Kiss and Alice Cooper in the 70s to Manson and Nails in the 90s. Yeah. Definitely. So, um, but yeah, I, fe I fell into music. Uh, music was uh, really the first thing that really spoke to me because... I, it just hit me at uh, I was about 11 years old when I really fell into you know rock and roll rock music and um, realized yeah I want to get a guitar I want a leather jacket I want to you mm -hmm. know really dive into this and my family was always very supportive of that they got me a couple I took guitar lessons for about six months and then I pretty much I was like, yeah, I figured out the basic chords and power chords. I'm good. <laughs> and I kind of, you know. That's a lot I, of guitar students yeah, that I observe definitely. at a store. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I, but the interesting thing was I developed my own style pretty early on. Mm -hmm. And I've that style has evolved over time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and I've always jammed with, uh, we, we were always jamming in the garage, jamming with a few different friends at a few high school bands. So, mm -hmm. You learn, you learn from playing. You learn the most from playing with other people, I think, than any mm. book or anything could ever teach you. Yeah, and you so. guys have a, a. I mean, that theme of communality has also manifested itself through the fact that you guys have done some podcast stuff yourself and music reviews. Mm -hmm. If people want to check out raw alternative dot com, correct? Is that the yes. site? Yes. So you know, you they uh, listeners they reviewed our album. Go check that out. It's one of the newer ones, but also it's good. Um, they set uh, this nice little platform up. Probably like I'm doing with this podcast to legitimize like your your friends or the Ohio music or whatever like mm -hmm. to, to kind of add another platform. So you guys are in some sense kind of giving back your musicians yourselves, of course, but you're giving back and kind of giving other people reviews or talking about music on other people's podcasts and kind of like trying to you know talk frame pop culture or rock or heavier whatever genre into your own opinion too. Is that a yeah. product of like? just having you've written a lot and now you want more outlets or is it or is it like i'm saying where you're trying to give back or is it a little bit of both or well when i was in college i was i studied journalism got my degree in journalism yeah and uh all through college i was playing in bands and from 
from about 07 to 09, I was in this uh, sort of goth industrial band. Really loved it, and I don't think people in Youngstown necessarily got it. And we were we were out for about two years, and toward the end of that two years, uh, we were finally starting to get some recognition. There weren't really many outlets though happening at the time. We were we were too weird for the metal crowd, you know, a little too out there for them. But we were a little too heavy for some of the other crowds, so we really didn't fit in. And I liked that about us, but. <laughs> You know, it was very tough. And then after leaving that band, I joined another band that was, uh, for about a year and a half, that was very accessible, mainstream, hard rock, and uh, kind of joined as a favor, ended up sticking around for a little while. And that's the band that I got to tour with in that. And, and I saw, wow, different style. And, I mean, the shows were doing very well, and it seemed like it wasn't very hard to get any kind of recognition. So when I... Left that project, I got involved with a thing at YSU called Rookery Radio. And when I was designing my platform, I, I wanted something for independent underground music of pretty much that's, you know, the, the umbrella term of alternative. I mean, that, if you look at alternative, what does alternative mean? The Smiths, Radiohead, Nirvana, yeah. uh, you know, to you know some some of the more extreme forms of metal to underground alternative hip hop so i kind of wanted to highlight a little bit of all of that mm -hmm. and then i really looked to the scene and what was going on and I, there's a lot of that going around here a lot yeah. of these bands that i think are amazing but aren't really getting the platform that they need you know and mm -hmm. the only thing that was really going on to my knowledge at that time was a homegrown show mm -hmm. yes. and they could only yeah. cover so much ground in mm -hmm. In an hour, yeah. and so I figured if I could do something a little more interactive, yeah. and I'm actually, you know, plus when you're on there an on the radio scene. station, there's rules and regs. Yeah, and, are, and the guy, you know. Viking. You know, I was on that radio station a couple weeks ago to promote the album, and Viking Jim is such a nice guy, and I think he would do this anyways. He's awesome. He does like you know lots of rock, but like they're on a classic rock station, so he kind of can't stray too far from home. He right. kind of made sure he played yeah. our like ballad songs, and he made sure to like bookend them with heavier stuff to like. Yeah keep the listener yeah. high energy and it's like yeah it's not it's not it's not the limitation is just that because the station genre and stuff and that makes sense but i mean i i get it though you you were looking for something that you could have kind of an open mm -hmm. style but still look at all the alternative well, everyone has yeah a I wanted otherwise to... why does there need to be like 10 or 12 different <laughs> yeah yeah exactly. because you find out there's a lot of crossover um yeah there was a. Uh, are you familiar with the group death grips no, no. Uh, it's um it's sort of it's an underground hip-hop group but i mean they've have a lot of industrial flair they they sample black flag songs you know so it's you know very forward thinking music and uh you know i i turn that on to people that are into punk people that are into metal and then i'll show people some of the more underground things that are happening in maybe heavy metal and i'll show them to people that like you know sort of that post rock maybe early emo and they they can see that you know, there's a lot of connection here to yeah. these musics. And mm -hmm. and that's what I probably took the most pride in, was I connected the dots for a lot of people. And when she joined the show about a year in, she did segments where she looked, every month she picked a subgenre. Mm -hmm. We started Everyone's with... like sub -sub -genre. I mean, Yeah. <laughs> we started with like psychedelic rock. I think uh, so, yeah. And, and yeah. progressive rock. And yeah. we looked at the evolution of each genre. And we connected it all the way up to... I, I know black we metal, I think I yeah know. we actually did it all the way to like Norwegian black metal mm -hmm. and but we cut we you know we caught gothic rock and post punk and uh, I think we had everything in between it was it's still up on the website too because I kind of mm. did it chronologically because I want to say that I pegged that as like the one that's still the most I guess you could say uh, odd well not odd but. The, the least accepted, I'd say. Well, it's, yeah. it's very. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's not that it's odd music. It's just it's. Not in an odd way, it was yeah. very forward thinking, and you're seeing a lot of bands on the scene today, like Russian Circles and Deaf Heaven, 
uh, American bands that obviously mm-hmm. aren't these Norwegian bands, you know, in the forest <laughs> with face paint. But mm-hmm. you could see where they took the atmosphere yeah. of that music yeah. totally. and brought it to something yeah. really new. And you know, well, and even with the psychedelic, because like I kind of feel like that was the one that was the most obvious first in rock, because like Sid Barrett and you know all those guys that they started mm-hmm. to take this regular Pet formatted sounds, Beach Boys, rock, yeah. you know, rock yeah. music, and and then that be kind of became mainstream because now like. I guess you could say Lenny Kravitz, which is played on the radio a lot, mm. is like obviously like a Hendrix. Like yeah, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So that that became, I guess you could say, normal too. I mean, I wasn't really thinking of it exactly that way, but I was actually uh, I heard I heard some of the Kravitz on the radio on the way f- from work, and I went, yeah, actually this had way more to do with uh, some of the the song formats than I originally thought when I first heard Kravitz like as a kid. And I wasn't he has really so thinking, much soul. Thinking of songs that the same way as I do now, put it that way. You haven't oh, sure. heard yeah. you haven't heard soul like that since Prince or Hendrix. You know. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's fun to connect the dots. I remember Rock and Roll Hall of Fame had a little thing years and years ago where they had stuff sitting up, little video. It was like probably the least remarkable exhibit out of mm-hmm. what was exciting, but they had little things where you could put headphones on. They play little pieces of music and they played like they probably played played a piece of uh, what is that song little wing by mm-hmm. jimmy Hendrix. and then mm-hmm. i think they right after that played a piece of a instrumental song called think by curtis mayfield off mm-hmm. of superfly center where you could tell he was totally influenced by jimmy Hendrix. Yeah, and that kind of cool. stuff kind yeah. of yeah like that stuff kind of like I was like, oh, cool, I'm glad, like, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, like, yeah. dug kind of deep, mm-hmm. and, like, kind of, like, you know, nice. helped, you know, cool. get your imagination going a little bit, and so, like, I'm glad that you guys kind of see the, that oh, stuff and connect sure. dots yeah. between yeah. genres and people socially, yeah. and that, we're just huge music yeah. nerds. Yeah, yeah. You know, we have such, so much useful, u- uh, sorry, useless knowledge <laughs> yeah, yeah. when it comes to, you know. I try to not do that, though, because I know as a, a songwriter, that's something I kind of kind of it kind of irks me but at the same time if if someone can say that i kind of remind them of this this and this and they're all different things and that's a yeah. good thing yeah and you then maybe you I mean? never so, heard of them and then you do yeah. become influenced by them because they thought you were Could that be. happens to us that, yeah i've had that yeah. and i'm like i don't know what you're talking about thanks mm-hmm. for the compliment because i guess you are giving me a compliment because yeah. you obviously like that band or person <laughs> so <laughs> no that's cool but, and then, yeah but and then to, to wrap us up you guys like music considered uh jobs Mm-hmm. Blue collar. You kind of spoke to it with the blue collar thing. Mm-hmm. You guys, um, color in my case. yeah, <laughs> and like you guys, your confidence throughout the years since childhood up mm-hmm. to now has it gotten better or worse? It'll, this will be kind of our like closing question. What do you, what do you guys think? Better or worse confidence? It, you want me and to go why? first? Yeah, go ahead. Right. Well, I don't know. I think I, I kind of answered it earlier. I guess before I even knew you were going to answer the question, right. <laughs> because I said, well, I think I spent, you Toys. know, my youth kind of having a like a lot of very opposite experiences socially, like in some instances where I was not accepted, and then opposite, you know, where I was like praised as a goddess or something. Mm-hmm. And I don't like either one, so I think that it's made me very balanced, and I really don't care, like. I, I know that sounds really terrible, but like, I'm just doing what I'm doing, and if people like it, great. If not, big deal, I guess. Yeah. Because like, I, I'm confident on who I am and what I do as a day job, to where I can I can identify with all of them at the same time and not have to be like, well, this is my day personality and this is my night personality <laughs> yeah. and this is you know me as a musician yeah. versus me as a music teacher. I feel like in order to be a good music teacher you also need to be able to kind of understand that those kids one day, they might end up wanting to be in bands too. Then they're going to sit yeah. there and want to play classical for the rest of their lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, cool. But anyway, I guess it's a pretty balanced thing. I think I've always been pretty balanced, but I think everyone as a kid does kind of have like more grandiose, like, I don't know. Of course, I was also you know a teenager in the 90s when being in a band was kind of at its peak but I was just oh. a little bit too young <laughs> to really you know what I mean mm-hmm. like I had bands quote unquote but not anything that ever really did anything and I was in Sam Goodwill in the early in the early O's but um yeah. that was you know his project so it was, sure, sure. Know, but writing my own stuff I think has a solidified balance me out so that's good there it is that's good and you uh as far as the confidence um you know, I think that's just something that comes with maturity. Uh, when right. when you're younger and the reptilian brain <laughs> is still, you know, really going, and uh, 
you know, you're, you kind of have that dog eat dog mentality. You really want to, and and I see a lot of that on the scene, mm -hmm. on the local scene. Yeah, they're not and overrun, on the bigger scene. Yeah, and um, <laughs> it's and it could get uh, sometimes it could get a little soul crushing. Um, I, I learned to step back and really focus on what's going on with my project and right. not worrying so much you know oh if we don't get this gig it'll always come around next time mm -hmm. you know you and um really uh, with time and uh you know i feel like we're in a good place but i don't ever want to feel like i've plateaued because sometimes you need that spark yeah. you you need that little bit of a slap in the face whether it be some young punk mm -hmm. You know, coming up in the game, or somebody that you know, you, someone maybe a little older that you thought was out of the game, and they come back with something. It's like wow, you yeah. know. And there's um, and and that's a cool thing about the young sound scene right now is you have acts much like Third Class and Kitchen Knife Conspiracy that have been out for, you know, the better part of two decades, and you know, you're still putting out really good music that's saying something. And and I get the vibe that you don't feel like you have to put something out every six months. Right. It's sure, just yeah. so my you know mm -hmm. what I mean, to stay relevant and you're struggling. Yeah. You know, when you when you put something out, when you do finally decide to speak, people listen. Yeah, you know? and, and that's and that's good and that's why I asked the question is because <clears throat> most people I have on here are people that have various projects and they happen just not to have quit yet. So I'm always interested in their confidence level because they must have something. Yeah. Something adjusted I'm right, whether it's it. balance or I'm not in it for the notoriety. Right. And I'm certainly not in it for the for the cash. And maybe that's why <laughs> yeah. you haven't stopped yet. I, I don't know. It's, it's 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 like a weird little puzzle to try to figure out people's confidence because I know that probably the three of us and among other guests probably have lower than the average, maybe comparatively, like not super low, but we have highs and lows because we're creative people. Yeah. And like. And so it's it's interesting to hear like yeah trying to find the balance like you say mm -hmm. or you know just kind of knowing that like I don't know that you you see so many other people like a good scene sometimes building in front of you, you so it helps you it's it's interesting sometimes you need to go from one extreme to the next to mm -hmm. be balanced yeah like you you don't come out of the womb balanced not no. not typically right. and even if you do like as a child you know m many children are quite balanced but when when you get to be like a teenager or something like that or a young adult you tend to push your boundaries and push one side of the scale to the you know back and forth whatever that may be it, it can be maturity it can be with music it could be you know drugs and alcohol it could be religion you know there, there's all kinds of things i've seen my peers go through and it's funny when they come out of the other side and they go yep here's who i am this whole time i just sometimes you have to go through these weird things to kind of know who you are if that makes yeah, sense totally. yeah yeah I, I would say <laughs> if you're if you're a little too comfortable yeah. And I don't think you're doing something right That's because true too. Yeah. Uh, someone much smarter than me came up with a quote: "No <laughs> great art ever came out of comfort." Right. And I yeah. and I will agree to that a hundred percent. I mean, it's good to feel good about what you and and know your capabilities, but you know, next time around, I know for myself, everybody's different, but I know for myself. I, I want to push myself. I want to take myself out of my comfort zone. I feel like I did that a little bit on the last record. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I hope to do that again in the future. Yeah. yeah you guys did. You definitely went somewhere new. That, that, that's what's interesting about interviewing you guys about it. Though we didn't go in depth, mm -hmm. uh, listeners can go and find you guys on the Jimmy Fro Indie Music Show where you guys do kind of pick the album apart yeah. song by song. Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. if anyone is intrigued by what they heard here, please go do that. But yeah, you guys, like, I think for a while you had some driving rock. Mm -hmm. good like indie and now you with this album you're like okay we're opening it up a little mm -hmm. changing up some stuff and things like that and, and looking forward to the future of course so yeah. lastly can you guys say look mom we're on a podcast <laughs> look mom we're on a podcast yeah you too I'm more like listen mom I'm on a podcast <laughs> mom, mom listen to me <laughs> okay. you're taking it so literally no, <laughs> that's cool um, okay guys well thanks for being on here and listeners Thank you for having us yeah of course and listeners please be reminded BaroqueMonody.BandCamp.com B-A-R-O-Q-U-E M-O-N-O-D-Y dot BandCamp.com and the usual stuff for me thirdclass.net or bullskit.com thirdclass.net has music, bullskit.com just has really dumb skits um, thanks for listening guys and be sure to check out Timeless Shots Photography, Jimmy Fro Indie Music Show and the Orange Avocado see you